Hey everyone, it's Mike from Glitch Free Gaming here, having a look at my personal top 5 games of 2017. If you're watching this, you probably notice there's a couple of other videos. There should be videos for Paul and Kieran's top 5 of the year, as well as our combined top 5 of the year for the podcast. These videos are going up in conjunction with our Game of the Year podcast, so if you haven't listened to them, I suggest you listen to them. There's just a couple of hours of fighting and arguing with anyone. So let's move on to my top five of the year. Coming in at number five is a game that was, it holds a lot to me, it's Gran Turismo Sport. I fell in love with Gran Turismo back in when it came out on the PlayStation 1, and Gran Turismo Sport kind of picks up the lost and missteps that the series took between sort of Gran Turismo 4 and Gran Turismo 5. It's going back to its original roots, it's taking the all the tests and everything and making it a really enjoyable game. There's also some fun features in there where you've got... the game just does these weird and wonderful things where you can build panoramic shots and put the cars in in front of landmarks and take pictures of them only because it looks stunning and that's the only thing that it does it looks really really good and is a lot of fun um, there are some really cool features that have recently been added due to a couple of updates around about Christmas time and they have brought back the events that were from the original first couple of games um, so there's things like the Clubman Cup and the Sunday Cup and it's races, it's more a, a richer, deeper single player experience than what was there uh, when the game first came out. Uh, I am still playing it, it's a lot of fun and I definitely suggest that you check it out. That's Gran Turismo Sport. Next up is my number four game of the year, which is Horizon Zero Dawn, which was a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Uh, I fell in love with this game from the opening, the, the first opening full motion video sequence. The game looks absolutely stunning, and just the amount of work that's in production values that's in this game lets you know that it's, it's going to be something rather special from the offset. Um, I just fell in love with the, the entire world. It's, uh, the open world is one of the best open worlds in the games of this year. I think probably the only one that beats it is Zelda's and there is so much to do. Uh, you can go around um, from you know once you leave the cities and you're out into the open you can just go and spend hours and hours hunting animals and just tracking the different ones, seeing what you can do, upgrading your weapons it is a little bit Grand Theft Auto-y in terms of, you know, the open world and the certain things that you, you know, that every game has of this type that you can go and do. But I think it's the setting and just, it makes it a little bit more different and the fact that you've got this story that's kind of drip fed to you in certain parts where you find the, the information about what's happened to the world and you slowly but surely piece together what's happened and that's brought in through the story. Um, so you can find pieces of information out with the story and uh, I really liked it, I thought it was really clever and uh, enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, I thought the, the use of weapons that you could use was something that I, I really liked and just had a lot of fun going out and hunting and doing some of the side mission stuff. Um, the story, it was good, it was a little bit generic but I think as a whole it is definitely one of the best games of the year and it's why it makes my top number 4. My number 3 game was for the Nintendo Switch and it is Super Mario Odyssey. This game was... It wasn't a surprise, I think we all knew that it was going to be one of the best games of the year. Uh, the surprising thing that I liked about it was that it is a Mario game, it's got that that, that kind of involvedness and it, the epic scale that the later Mario games have had, but you're able to play it in bite-sized chunks. The, each world that you go to has save points, it feels like someone has played it on a long journey, or uh, they've played it in bite-sized chunks which is how I experienced the game. I got the game when I was on holiday in 
Paris and I played the game every night when we got home and I would do a world or half a world and I finished the game and it, it did feel like it was in bite-sized chunks, it was really enjoyable, I loved it. And then looking back in it I thought it wasn't long enough and then looking at the playthroughs I'd spent 15 hours playing this game and I think that is that's a hallmark of a good game where you've played through the whole thing and you're not tired of it. You, you think you've only spent a couple hours and you end up spending something like 15 hours in a game. Uh, I know 15 hours these days on a, a large video game like that isn't a lot of time but that was just in main story quest. You can go back once you finish the main story in Super Mario Odyssey and you can go back to all the different worlds and there's more coins to uh, collect and you can unlock more costumes and there's different sub quests and little side missions and things that you can do and you can spend a hell of a lot of time there and just uh, lose a lot of your spare time as well so that is why Super Mario Odyssey is my number three game of the year moving on to my number two game of the year Again, this is on the Nintendo Switch, what, which was my uh, most played console of the year. It's Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. This game was a surprise and it sort of came out of nowhere for myself and I think for Paul as well, where we had seen the video announcement for it and it just looked a bit nuts and a little bit crazy. You've got Ubisoft bringing in the rabbits and mixing it in with Mario, so you've got these cra the crazy world of the rabbits, it tends not to make sense and it goes completely nuts. And mixing in with Mario, which has always been very fun but it's been quite wholesome, so it was quite a, a jarring match when you've seen the original video. The We then saw gameplay footage before the game was released, and it is, it's a riff on XCOM, uh, which is, the original XCOM is one of my favorite games is one of my go-to games I do like that kind of strategy element in games and this is a simplified version of that it's not dumbed down it's just simplified there's a lot of things that work in it um, they've, they've taken things taken things out from of XCOM that wouldn't have worked and it just makes it for a very fun experience and I think that uh, yeah you should check it out and I'm gonna stop rambling about that and uh, then we can move on to my number one game of the year, but that's my number two, which is Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. My number one game of the year is Splatoon 2 on the Nintendo Switch. I have spent a, well, over 50 hours this year on Splatoon 2. It is one of the best multiplayer experiences I have had all year. It is just a hell of a lot of fun to pick up and play three minute matches at a time. You can blast through five or six matches and then turn it off and off you go. Uh, I also love things that they do. The game is supported a, immensely. They have constant updates where they're adding stages, they're adding weapons. There's so many weapons that are added all the time. Uh, you have the splat fests that happen on a regular basis where they basically make you choose a faction and then for two days of the weekend they make you battle it out and whoever's won the most matches and whoever has the most popular faction wins certain points and then they add the points up and whoever's got the most wins. Um, it's just a fun little thing to add to. You've the majority of the games are played in a friendly, non-competitive way, in meaning that it's not ranked. Just having a lot of fun with that. Then you, once you're used to the game and you, you're quite proficient at it, you can move on to the ranked battles. The ranked battles are a lot of fun. And they have three or four different game modes that you can have and have a look at. And they have also made sure that the game can be played in single player. They've got the single player mode, a little bit of a story which is a lot of fun but at the end of the day the meat and the bones of Splatoon 2 is the multiplayer and like I said before it is one of the best experiences I've had all year. I've spent so much time on it and I can't recommend it enough. So that's my number one game of the year. It's Splatoon 2 for the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. So that's it. Thank you very much, guys, for listening to.
to and watching this video. Um, thanks very much for listening to the podcast. And if you want, you can leave uh, some comments down in the comment section just to let us know what you think of the videos, our top fives. And uh, we shall get back to normal recording and we'll speak to you soon. So I will see you guys later then. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.